I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is the president of the Automotive Body and Painting Association of Hawaii and president of his very successful unibody auto tech collision business. He is Michael Chong, and today we are going beyond auto repair. Mike. Rusty. <laughs> Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show today. So excited uh, to be here and, you know, just to share with you. Well, you know, I had no idea that you played tennis in high school. I know. <laughs> I mean, all these years that we've known each other, and I didn't bring it up, but I did. I played tennis since uh, sixth grade all the way through senior in, in, in high school. And uh, what schools did you go to? Uh, uh, my uh, middle school was uh, Stevenson Intermediate. That's where we started tennis, and then I moved over to uh, Roosevelt High School. So did you go to States? I did go to States, and interesting enough, um, you know, we, we, we played doubles one time. And uh, my doubles partner and I, we, we happened to beat a seeded uh, uh, team and um, got seeded top five. Nice. Uh, but uh, we decided to go uh, on our singles level. Yeah. So we never played again, and we kept our seed for, <laughs> for a couple of years. So that was pretty interesting. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, Mike, what college did you go to? Uh, University of Hawaii. And what did you study over there? Uh, engineering. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Now, I want to ask you, Michael, about your, your mom. I know that she's had a great influence on you. What's the biggest thing that you've learned from your mom? Mom, um, coming from an Asian background, uh, you know, just, just working hard. My parents uh, bust their butts uh, just, just, just to provide for us growing up. And uh, the trust that she's uh, laid upon me at a young age um, just, just makes me who, who I am today because of the fact that, you know, do the right thing. Um, all the time and uh, you know put the effort and, and hard work into it and Michael tell me about your dad my dad uh, growing up like any other Asian family uh, you know dad was the the, the rock the hammer um, you know we've we've gone into many many disagreements but it was dad and um, uh, he, he proved to me that you know you have to strive uh, for excellence and you have to put in 100% with everything you do Nice. And, and that's, that's, that's what I, 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 I look, look upon for my dad. So, Michael, I, I want to ask you, what is the first job that you ever had in your life? <laughs> first job that I had was uh, Burger King. Really? Uh, and, and it wasn't, I, I didn't even get to, uh, what do you call it, flipping burgers or, or making the sandwiches. It was like cleaning the, 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 uh, the brass pipes, yeah. <laughs> uh, not even getting to cashier. You know, it, it was all the good work for it. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, it lasted uh, two weeks um, because of the fact that my family wanted me to concentrate on, on school yeah. and said, you know, I don't think that's going to help you with your, with your studies. So your, your dad started Chong's Auto Service? Yeah, Chong's Auto Body back in the day, okay. uh, I want to say back in the 70s. So when we immigrated into uh, Hawaii, uh, due to the fact that my, my aunt uh, married military, mom was pregnant with me and wanted to. Uh, um, get the family into the United States via through Hawaii. Um, at that time, uh, you know, dad, English not being his second language, uh, needed to start a living. And instead of uh, looking for a job, um, my aunt introduced him to a few auto repair shops, uh, owners at that time, learned a trade, and uh, within a couple of years, uh, opened up his own first car garage. Wow. So did you work with him in, in the business? In the business, growing up uh, as a kid, uh, as a boy, yeah. you know, being around cars, I wanted to be there, but it wasn't work. It was, it was, <laughs> it was going through summer, you know, summer, uh, summer vacation, um, sanding cars, messing with motors, and, 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 and just being a, being a boy, but not necessarily thinking that I'm learning the trade or yeah. getting into the trade. Yeah. And, and at the same time, because it felt like a dirty business, I always told, you know, my family and everyone else, I'm not doing this. It's too much work. <laughs> it's too much work. It's tough work. It's tough work, yeah. yes. All right, so now you're the president of Unibody Auto Tech Collision. What, how did that company start, and how did it evolve from your dad's business? Well, from dad, um, through college, uh, he needed help because of the fact that um, uh, it was getting, a com getting to be a competitive market. So uh, going to school, helping him out. Um, 
from there, uh, realizing uh, the, the successes that he needs, uh, we needed to really look into it as a, as a business. And during that time, graduating in the 90s uh, as an engineer, uh, we were a dime a dozen. Couldn't get a job. So dad offered the same salary as an engineer, come help me out, which I think he kind of planned out, which worked <laughs> out pretty good. Uh, got involved, helped him out, started growing as dad and son, bumping heads and, and, and almost to the point that we've gotten into some fist fights, just with, <laughs> just with disagreements, but you know, just two boys in the family. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, he's still dad. So throughout that process, uh, as we grew and evolved, um, yeah, we, 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 we both talked about, okay, what is the evolution of this business and where do we go? And um, Chong's Auto, I mean, we could have kept the name, but I looked at it where uh, maybe a bigger picture, um, find out what's efficient and, and what works, and that's where Unibody Auto Tech uh, was created back in early 2000s. Wow, nice. Yeah. So, Michael, so many people know you and so many people respect you as a successful leader. Why is your business successful? Why is my business successful? I mean, it's about people. You yeah. know, um, you really got to invest the time and, and, and money into your people. They're the ones that's, that will uh, grow your organization and run it uh, because of the fact, as a matter of fact, today uh, with my Unibody staff, uh, gives me the time and, and, and pr privilege to be on a show like this. Um, they basically um, run with it, and I just invest more time with them. Yeah, you empower them. I empower them, yes. So how do you see the auto industry uh, evolving right now? Wow. Um, auto, auto industry is evolving every minute. Yeah. Um, we, 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 I don't want to say we joke around with it, but we kind of tend to say it to, the, to our clients, um, imagine... Uh, a smartphone on wheels, you know, how we, we get a new iPhone. A new iPhone just came out, right, yeah. every year. Uh, for the cars, again, you got new models coming out every year, but throughout the process, more technology is getting into it. Uh, Self-driving. Yeah. Uh, they've got uh, safety systems that's just evolving uh, every day. So a learning process or learning curve for us in our industry uh, is tremendous, and we need to research every day all the differences that come out. I know that um, you owned Surrender Bar before. Yes. That's how I met you. Yes, that's how we met. Um, so I want to know, Michael, what was the best parts of owning a bar? Best parts of owning a bar actually is just meeting the people. Yeah. You know, in my, in my, in my business in regards to uh, the auto industry, you, you meet people, you may see them uh, come back, but, you know, statistics is every seven and a half years. In the bar business, I get to meet all walks of life. Every day they come in, and my strive was, uh, you know, just just understanding and and being genuine with people uh, made me a better person and and made me understand, especially the culture in Hawaii. Uh, just not just friends, but uh, long lasting relationships, friends that I can call upon anytime. And then you got guests that come, you know, whether it's out of island, whether it's uh, another state or another country, coming you to visit you at the bar and just having a conversation and stories like how we're talking today. Yeah. You learn, you learn tremendous things about people, and, and that's what I loved about it. And, and you would schedule a lot of business meetings over there, huh? That was, that was, the, that was the catch, you know, because of the fact that I, I felt uh, uh, doing a lot of business meetings elsewhere, uh, an opportunity came up and people were saying, you know, you're crazy. What are you, are you going to open a bar and restaurant? Do you know anything about it? Well, you know, do some research and you got to take risk and, and, and go for it. But at the same time, uh, scheduling my meetings there, and I think uh, there was a few that you see in some of the wine tastings and yeah. the, uh, the food tastings we did, and yeah. it was a learning process as we went, and, and, and it made me a better person and a better leader today. Well, I had a great time every time I would go, so I'm glad. <laughs> it was I'm a glad. Good, good time. Yes, it was. So, Michael, what, what did you learn about that experience from owning a bar? Owning a bar, again, it's the people. Um, the, the bar business, uh, having great people is, is, is really challenging. And it comes down to the point that I think um, the competition with bars are, are so stiff that people can, people meaning your employees or your staff or your team, can move, move so quickly. Yeah. So how do you keep them? How do you entice them to stay with you? And, and a, lot of, a lot of it was me getting the respect out of my staff uh, that in turn had them stay. And when they stay, it, it built the success of the bar. And then I took that more uh, into my other businesses that, hey, maybe I'm not spending enough time with my, my staff. Yeah. 
I make an effort uh, to make sure that I understand uh, what what everyone's going through personally and find out what their goals and their success uh, lies in them personally. And then in turn, they share that with our business or, or, or our business model or our organization. It's all about empathy. It is. Yeah. It is, definitely. You're caring about your people's well-being and, and their personal goals. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right. Now you're the president of the Automotive Body and Painting Association of Hawaii. Tell me about that organization. The Automotive uh, Body and Painting Association of Hawaii, in, in short, we call it APA. Yeah. Um, it's, in, it's an organization, believe it or not, was established in 1959. So it's a learning process for me. I got elected president this year. And we're body shop members uh, across the entire state. And we look at how can we elevate our industry and how do we share knowledge, educate, and, and make sure that we are on the cutting edge of doing our repairs. The biggest thing that we're looking at today is educating the consumer. Um, and when I say educating the consumer, it's like, you know, when was the last time you got into an accident? Do you remember? It's, it's probably a long time or maybe never. And most people don't get into an accident. Um, statistics go back, it's an average of about seven and a half years. So when you do get into an accident, what do I do? What are your questions? Where do I go? So this is where the uh, APA comes into play or the organization comes into play. It's like we, we want to educate the consumer and gain trust with the consumer so that they understand when they do choose a shop, and if, especially if it's a member shop, that you know, they, can, they can make sure that their cars get repaired properly. And Michael, it sounds like you know, the members of your organization, I mean, yeah, you guys, they're, they're all competitors, but it's really, you don't have the mindset of being competitors. You have the mindset of actually helping everybody in your industry so that like a, a high tide raises all boats. Absolutely. Uh, in our industry, you got to look at it where, yeah, it, we are competitors, but how do we make, us, make ourselves better, right? You know, when, when we look at and we try to strive um, the best that we can be, like you said, you know, in, in a harbor, when we raise that tide, uh, all the boats rise at the same time. Same with uh, the shops that we work with. Because we may not look at working on the same car all the time, and we may have different trials and tribulations that we, we encounter. That information is so valuable that we can share one another within member shops so that we can not, or excuse me, avoid that second mistake yeah. and maybe uh, learn from one another from there. And it, it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, I can see that clearly. Yeah. And you guys also, you did a big donation to the Hawaii Food Bank. Yes, we T did. Tell me about that. So we, we have our annual golf tournament, and this year it was a huge success. Uh, we, we raised $10,000 initially from the, from the uh, golf tournament funds itself. But at the same time, within two weeks, believe it or not, two weeks, we had um, eight member shops and uh, associate members, which means... Uh, car dealerships as well. So we've got Surfco and Nissan, um, uh, Toyota Surfco and Nissan um, um, participate. Uh, we actually uh, receive a thousand pounds of food. Wow. Plus another 2,800 and some change. So with this uh, program through the association, total of 12,000 and some change plus a thousand pounds of food. It, it, was a, it was a great event. I mean, it's a feel good thing too because we learn more about the food bank through this process. And this, at the same time, hopefully we can show the community that, that we as an association care about the community and we want to we do good. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I love that. And you have a, a, a huge passion about child safety seats. Definitely, definitely. Um, there's so much that I've learned about child safety seats in regards to how they're installed on, in vehicles. Believe it or not, 90% of the time it's installed improperly. Um, only because of the fact that, especially in Hawaii, we're in a rush. And in Hawaii, you've got mom and dad who's got, you know, different jobs. They drive differently. And then they're shuffling their kids back and forth. And, and when they're moving the, the child seat back and forth, uh, uh, we're not taking the time to install them properly. Uh, not, not only with that, but if they get into a collision, uh, people, the consumers don't realize some of these child seats, even though that we don't see damage, physical damage to the seat, it may need to be replaced. Um, then there's the other aspect of there's recalls, 
as well as expiration dates. Did you know that child seats have an expiration date? No. <laughs> I didn't either yeah. until I, I started researching and, and playing with this. So as an organization, early next year, first quarter, we're looking at um, building a, a, a large event, uh, and it's free to the community. We don't have the date yet, but we're, we're, we're focusing about March of 2020 uh, to do a, a child safety inspection seat program. But hopefully we can get more and more uh, um, community members or just, just people to understand that we ought to take a second look on how we're installing our child seats. Sounds good, Michael. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond auto repair. Sounds good. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Michael Chong. We will be back in a quick minute. Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, from 11 to 11.30. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. I'm so thrilled to have our show kicked off, and so please join us on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock as we talk to local entrepreneurs and hear their stories. Hey, aloha everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Today's special guest is a great leader and president of the Automotive Body and Painting Association of Hawaii. He is Michael Chung, and today we are going beyond auto repair. Michael, I, I know you read my book, Beyond the Lines. I want to know your thoughts about it. You know, you've created this book that's easy to read and down to the point. I've, I've, give, I've given it to my managers. I've given it to special people that I feel that um, it's going to benefit them. And I, I always go back and share the four Ps. Oh, you yeah. Know, people, purpose, process, process equals, equals performance. performance. Yeah. And, and it's so true. I mean, over the years, as we go through either leadership seminars, classes, or the books that we read, uh, sometimes they're a little more complicated. But I like how you put it as a four Ps. It's, just, it's simple to remember. Uh, as well as the fact that it's simple to understand. And, yeah. and I'm going to use that, if you don't mind, oh, continuously the, with the people I deal with. But it, it, it's, it's an awesome book. Um, I think you did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I feel great about that. I, I, I love it. I love it. And then this way, it's easier for me to utilize a tool like your book and, and pass it on. Yeah. Uh, this way, you know, uh, it, instead of coming always from me, I think um, some of the People I talk to think I talk too much, for one, <laughs> and at the same time, they think I know too much. But this way, you know, I can pass on something else to them. Yeah, yeah. you can blame it on me. Yeah, blame Say, it on you. Yeah, you know, so it works it that me. way. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, what kind of leader are you? What kind of leader am I? Um, I guess looking inside out, uh, I feel like I'm a, um, compassionate. I, I like to go back and say, you know, be the compassionate samurai. Yeah. So be compassionate but sturdy. Uh, outside in, maybe some people might think I'm a little more aggressive. But at the same time, I think, you know, I, I, I've learned the concept of listening first. Yeah. And I feel like I, I listen very well. And with that uh, develops a good character that I feel I gain the respect and trust of my peers or, or um, whichever organization or group that I lead. And I, I, feel, I feel confident with that. And, and I like how the response comes to this way. How do you keep improving yourself as a leader? Keep improving. Always keep an open mind. Never know, never state that I know everything. I, I always want to uh, understand new, new things. Um, I hate reading. Uh, <laughs> and yet you read my I, book. <laughs> yeah, I read, that's why your book is easy to read. Um, I, I like uh, listening to audiobooks. Yeah. Um, anytime there's a, a pause in a day, um, that kind of soothes me. And you, you kind of go back and forth through it. But at the same time, again, we just need to learn over and over again. Uh, I, I'm hungry for new information, what people can share. And uh, I, I, I digest that and see what works. And you got to take risk and try it. And if it doesn't work, you learn from it and move forward, right? That's why you're successful, Michael. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, who, you know, I always say that the, the greatest leaders build other great leaders. 
Who's, who has had a big influence on you as a mentor? As a mentor, honestly, and, and, and I look back over and over again, um, I met a, a lot of great people, a lot of great leaders out there, but I always fall back on the biggest mentor and biggest leader that I see, my father. Yeah. Uh, only because I look back and, and understand if I was put in his shoe, uh, bringing a brand new family, newborn, into a foreign country, not knowing the language, and not understanding. Uh, and back then, there was no Google, right? So you go in, and you're going to open up your business, and you're going to strive and, and, and continue to work uh, blood, set, blood, sweat, and tears and be successful. Uh, I looked in, into that history, and that's what drives me today to be uh, that better leader, yep. uh, not just for my father, for my family. Uh, and now my whole ohana, as you can say, is my, my unibody. Uh, family and their families. Yeah. So you know, I look into the fact that um, I want to see how I can grow everyone that that comes around me. And then today, you know, having the respect and honor of being elected president of the association. Now I've got seventy plus body shops throughout the the, the state, and they're my new ohana, my new family. How do I uh, extend my leadership and my experience to to those out there? And then I'm not better than anyone out there, but I think I. I do well by transcending that information, um, whatever experience I get towards the people that, that I look up to. Totally agree. Michael, what's the, what are some of the biggest adversities or challenges that you faced in your life? Biggest adversities, uh, I want to say, uh, one was uh, you know, the decision of, of taking over dad, uh, taking over his business. Uh, the fear was, is this going to be successful? Am I going to be successful? Is this the right, you know, right, right reasons and, and, and so forth? Um, and the second one is uh, going through a divorce. Um, you know, I, it, 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 it draws a lot of negative energy into your life that you kind of lose purpose, you lose that focus. And, and I still had the responsibility of my, my, my repair business and my, my team there. But uh, how can you say you were never there? You were there physically, but you were not there. Um, so those are probably the, the, the two biggest adversities that yeah. I would say in life. I can see that. Now, you know, some of the greatest leaders, I mean, it takes a lot of courage on their part to do the right thing, to make the right decisions. Do you have an example of a time where it took courage on your part to make a tough decision? It, my toughest decision, and, and it kind of goes back to that adf adversity of, of an experience during life, was... Um, uh, Kind of hurts still thinking about it, but today, you know, uh, back, back, I want, I want to say a few years, um, I had to fire my sister. Whoa! So she, she was part of the organization. Yeah. Um, it was just, how do you do that? Yeah. Especially the fact that you got to go back, and uh, I, I don't know if the word is explain or or share that information to your parents, uh, to my father and mother. They're looking at me like, what kind of person are you? Well, what are you doing? Uh, but I had to keep strong and, 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 and look at the big picture. And the big picture was it, it just wasn't the same passion. It wasn't uh, the purpose that, that my sister was, was there, or she didn't see the purpose that she was looking for. So I needed her to kind of trend her own, her own ways. And, and aside from that, I think growing up, she had to grow up being in my shadows. Yeah. So I, I know it's tough for her as well. But, you know, with that being heartful, uh, challenging, courageous, today I can say, honestly, I have a better relationship with my sister. Um, and she actually works for another shop today. <laughs> and, and, and it's a win-win because yeah. uh, now she can develop her leadership skills. And she's helping with her experiences to develop that shop and, and, and share, share, you know, her experiences. Uh, and, and at the same time, develop her growth as well. And then aside from that, our family dynamics is a lot stronger. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm thinking, but I'm hoping that she sees that. And, and uh, you know, the conversations we have today, um, after today, uh, she might be shocked that I brought this up. But, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll have another conversation for that. But, you know, I love her dearly, and I'm super proud of what she's doing at the other shop. Uh, but at the same time, I'm super proud of how, you know, she's keeping our family uh, strong at hold. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, it sounds like it just wasn't the right fit. Exactly. And she needed to, you know, pursue a different passion. And maybe she didn't see it at the time, but you, sooner or later, when you look back, yeah, they can see that that was uh, it was tough on you, obviously tough on her. Uh, but but look at how it all works out. Definitely. And it's interesting you say that because I think now they look at the fact that um, wow, it was a tough decision for me now. You yeah. know, but back then it was kind of like. You know, I'm the bad guy, and you know what are you doing? You know, are you are you willing to like throw this away? You're you're, you're destroying the family, but uh, it it took years. But you know, today the dynamic is so much better, and being that it's coming from a strong Asian family, I, my dad will never admit it. Yeah, my mom will never admit it. But you know, I think I think uh, reading between the lines, between the lines, between the lines, um, I feel I feel like that they're proud of the fact that I made that courageous decision because it's so much better today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Michael, what you know, we've received words of wisdom and some great advice over the years. But what what's one piece of advice that really sticks with you? One piece of advice that really sticks with me, I want to say, is um, you know, you're gonna hear so many people tell you different things. You're gonna read so many things. Eventually, I look back and I really feel my gut. And uh, I don't know what you call it, intuition. Uh, instinct. Instinct. Um, but I think the gut is what's telling you that that's the risk you wanna take. Um, and for me, I made a lot of mistakes. But at the same time, with those mistakes and those risks, I've learned more. So it's almost like I wanna go out there and make the mistake. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like, uh, going back to the whole idea of why would you open a bar, you know, why would you open Surrender Bar and Grill? It's like, I don't want to go in there and make a mistake to learn. <laughs> yeah. And I go back and say, you know what, if I didn't do that, uh, the character I have today about understanding people, um, maybe I might not have it or maybe I'll gain it later on in life. But I got it today and it's making me more successful with everything else that I, I kind of, you know, touch, touch in hand or endeavor. So it, I, it's it's... It's the gut that you got to go through. Makes sense. Yeah. Michael, before we finish the show, I want to ask you one more question. What gives you fulfillment? What gives me fulfillment? You know, um, it's got to be my family. And then at the same time, I'm, I, I'm, I, knew, I just got married a year ago. Uh, my wife's awesome, um, down to the point that it, it, the dynamic again, you know, talking to my, about the divorce in the past, but today, my wife, my family, that, that how do you say that culture fits so well, yeah. and the support that they give. Um, fulfillment, fulfillment, again, for me is because of the fact that my family risked so much in their life, put so much effort in their life. I want to see what I can do to make their life continuing on uh, most enjoyable, and that drives me every day. Awesome. Michael, want to thank you for oh. sharing your insights on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Like I said, very nervous at the beginning, but, you know, got excited. And I'm, I'm glad I could share with you, share with the audience. And um, hopefully this will develop a better leadership skill for me moving forward. And, you know, I hope to come back for your show. Yeah, that'd be great. Definitely. Thanks, thank Michael. You. Appreciate that. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKabori.com, and my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Michael and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.